so guys, congratulations on uh, on House of the Dragon. The the scope and spectacle of this series is really quite breathtaking. How much of the the backdrop, the sets, was actually physically there for you to interact with versus sort of visual effects? I was lucky because a lot of my stuff was in the Red Keep. So I was just working on set, so it was like being at theatre. It wasn't like I was staring at stuff that wasn't there. Mm. So, and every prop there was, was made so well and everything was just so detailed that I never felt like I was on some big um, epic, if I'm honest with you. Never felt like that performing mm. it. They're all very intimate scenes, mm. so um, that's how it felt to me. Mm. There's yeah. no green screen backdrop, acting to a tennis ball, none of that. No, not much. Obviously, there's stuff in the throne room, mm. and there's um, early on, you see early on, you know, the state that it's in then. We never saw that, obviously, on the day, but the throne room's there, and it's a big set, mm. and so, you know, if anything, when you watched it back, you're like, oh, wow, that's how it looks. Mm. It's pretty amazing. There's definitely a physical aspect to this series, you know, riding on horseback, riding on dragon back, getting in all the gear. How much of that were you able to do yourselves? Really well, yeah. I mean, I was on the horse. You, you, you were on the horse. Oh, I did all know? of mine. Yeah, <laughs> all <laughs> trotting. Styling. Trotting. <laughs> you. I mean, I had a lot of canter. I did a bit of cantering. I always. I don't. I, I'm not great on horses, though. It's, no, it's, it's, it's not my natural habitat. Yeah. No. No, I just had a little bit on horseback, but it wasn't much. It certainly didn't warrant 20 horse riding lessons that no. I was scheduled. So no, no, no. I was like, you can kind of get rid of 18 of them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. me to just trot into the woods. <laughs> It's not going to be a problem. <laughs> and, and, and the fight scenes as well, a lot of training, Matt, that went yeah, into those? Yeah, loads of training for that sort of stuff. Yeah. And I did, I, yeah, I did, I did all of it, really. I remember watching your first fight rehearsal, because there was the gym at the studio yes. that I was using, and then yes, I you remember. were yeah. with, fighting with Fabian. Mm. And I was yeah. going, go on, you dossers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he chinned me, he chinned me on that one, Fabian. Did. He chinned me right on my, because I've got a big forehead in. Yeah. He got me. <laughs> <laughs> And having Miguel on set, as someone who's been through the whole Game of Thrones experience, yeah. how helpful was that? I thought it was very helpful. Mm. You know, he was the guy that, to me, had, had directed some of the most memorable and epic episodes of it. So um, he had a real sense of the tone of the. the, the yeah, thing. Mm. definitely. Mm. He knew the world, and he'd been there and experienced making something on this level before. And he was a great touchstone for me. Because, um, you know, just in terms of character and character development, and he knew how to work with me as an actor as well, mm. which is always helpful. Mm. And the world is so fleshed out, it even has its own language. How difficult was it to learn that high Valerian? Well, not too bad, actually, because I'm, 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 quite, I'm quite, if I dare I say, I'm, I'm quite good at learning lines. That's good. And um, so I, like, I learned them musically, and it was mm. the same thing. I'm, I, I can sort of pick it up quite quickly so it, yeah it was all right and actually I found it really revealing about Damon and, and mm. quite um, enjoyable to perform. Mm. I mean is, is Damon purely motivated by selfish ambition or does he genuinely think in his own mind that he's doing the right thing? I think that's a good question I think the latter I think yeah. he genuinely thinks in his own mind that he's doing the right thing a lot of the time his morality is his own and it's slightly warped but it is tr true nevertheless. Mm. And, and Viserys, is he just blinded by loyalty to his brother, or does he genuinely see something in him that's... I think good? he is blinded a bit by loyalty, and I think he neglects his brother a little bit, and I think he feels as long as he's occupied and I'm not hearing his name mentioned at this council table, then everything's going to be, everything's OK, mm. you know? And he kind of says that, I think, in the first episode. As long as he's occupied, then I, I don't need to hear anything else. Mm. Um, but I think there's a bit of neglect with his brother, definitely. And I think when Viserys is king, their roles changed massively as well. Mm. And I do think Viserys loves his brother, but he does see him as a bit of an inconvenience a lot of the time. Mm. Yeah. And, and Matt, having come out the other side of Doctor Who madness, has that prepped you in any way for House of the Dragon in terms of you know, the legacy of the series, the weight of expectation, the fan reaction? Yeah, I think so. Probably because you've you know you've experienced something similar and it's a similar genre, mm. it, not genre, but you know what I mean. Mm. And, and um, I, you know the expectation when you play the Doctor is is quite daunting. And this I'm sharing it with like 20 other actors. Mm. Any tips for for Paddy, the rest of the cast? No, 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 no. I, I would never presume such. <laughs> no, I'm just being hiding, mate. <laughs>